Hi, I'm Roger Van Pelt for the Fresno Commodore Users Group and tonight I'm going to be looking at a program called GigaCAD Plus which was written in 1986 in Germany by Stephen Wilsmeyer and Stephen Lipstrew. It's an improved version of his earlier GigaCAD. The software and all documentation we found is written in German so we made an attempt to translate as much of it as possible in order to figure out uh, the basics and learn how to create and render objects. The setup uh, is with a 128 or C64 computer, one disk drive, uh, a joystick in port 2 or a joypad. Uh, unfortunately, it's not natively compatible with the mouse. and it can be used with a super CPU, which is highly recommended if you have one. Uh, it may be possible to use it with an emulator, such as Vice, and run it at a higher speed. To load the program, put in the system disk, and type load. GigaCAD will do an asterisk, comma 8, comma 1 return turn on the super CPU I'll be switching the super CPU on and off as I need it Okay, we have the first screen loaded up, and here uh, we can load models or objects, zoom them in and out, and we can render them. Also, we can uh, translate them here, but first we need something uh, to use. So let's make some primitive shapes. Okay, um, so we have uh, some menus here for the top. Basically, this is uh, to make faces or polygonal forms in two dimensions. This is a 3D editor. Uh, here you can draw in three dimensions in the, um, the quarter, four quarters of the screen. Corrector. That's for deleting objects. Form, that's to select objects to translate. Macro, that's basically like a, sort of like a scene that you can uh, create or load, or uh, individual objects. Disk is where you uh, enter your disk commands. Exit takes you to the previous screen. Uh, where you can render and uh, translate and zoom. Down here we have the um, translation commands. These four screens represent X, Y, and Z axis. Uh, so let's make a form here. We're going to make a cube. This is of uh, basically works like um, a rubber band selection mode. I have to turn off the super CPU to make it actually go a little faster. Okay. Made four vertices and left arrow to escape. Now we've got a plane, and we have to turn this into a cube. So 
to extrude it and hit plus, it makes a copy of the plane. And we go down here, translate it along the x-axis, and got about that far. To connect the four corners, hit asterisk, and escape from that. And if we hit form, we can go down here and rotate our cube. If we select it first. Now I have a three-dimensional cube. Okay, so let's move that over to the left a little bit. Okay. Okay, now I'm going to add another shape here. Escape from that mode. And go back to the face mode, which is what I'm calling it. Uh, Let's make a cone. Okay, so the cone is going to be considered a rotational body. So we'll hit R to create the axis around which it's going to rotate, create the top vertex, and go down to the, where we want the bottom, create the bottom vertex on that side, and you're creating a pro profile. and hit fire again to create another point left out to escape it's asking um, how many facets we want okay so let's do 12 and rotate it 360 degrees and that I'm not sure what, what it is but we don't need it so Macro name, it's asking for a name for the object. Um, we'll call it cone. Return. We'll turn on the super CPU. And there it is. I'll turn it off again because I'm going to translate it. Let's see. Rotate it a little bit around this axis. Turning on the super CPU again here. Okay. Turn it off. And let's lock it down with left arrow. I'm going to add a sphere now. And so, first, we fix the outer circumference of the circle that we're going to be using to make the sphere. Press fire button to add a point at the top. Then we go back down to the center and hit C. And it's asking for um, the number of points around the sphere, 12. And rotation will be 360 degrees. and it creates a circle with 12 points around the circumference. Hit the at sign to fix that. Then we hit R to rotate and left arrow to escape that screen. And how many facets do we want? 12. Rotation will be 360 degrees. And this we don't need macro name, we'll call it sphere. Turn on the super CPU, it is on. Okay. And we're going to translate this over to the left a little bit. On the Y axis. C super CPU on. Okay, there we go. Super CPU off. 
and I'm hitting let go to lock it down. Okay, now we have our three primitive shapes. Let's go to exit, and it's asking us to insert the system disk. Okay, now we're going to go to form and rotate all the shapes together. So let's see. Turning on the super CPU because this action is calculation intensive. Turning it off. Let's rotate it on another axis here. Super CPU on. Okay. Turning it off. To escape that mode. Now let's go to Modi. That's where the rendering modes are. And the options we have here are A, vanishing point set. Um, this puts it in perspective or orthographic mode. Um, it tells you where to set the vanishing point on the X, Y, and Z coordinates. Um, B, draw the cut line. C, hidden line mode that hides uh, faces and lines that won't be appearing in the camera view. D, shading mode. E, set the light source coordinates in uh, X, Y, and Z. Uh, F, multicolor mode, which is um, a Commodore computer graphics rendering mode. Uh, G, dual high res and multicolor mode. High res is another graphics mode for the Commodore, and it'll be the default for the rendering. Hidden line and shading mode and I is cutting plane. Okay, so we're going to choose A and we'll keep the defaults for X, Y, and Z coordinates and H to have both hidden lines and shading on and fire button to go back to the previous screen. Now we go to display which is render it's asking me to insert the system disk. We'll turn on the super CPU. And just hit no for this message. And it'll continue. It uses dithering for the shading. Uh, it can't do shadows, but it can render in perspective. Hit no or nine again. And the system disk is already in the drive.
Okay, and there's our render. Um, now let's escape with the left arrow. Okay. Now let's look at some more complex objects. Okay, had to push fire button to enter that. Now we're going to load some files from the data file disk here. So first we'll go to disk. First we'll turn off the super CPU actually. Okay. And A to load an object. And uh, A again to load the object that we want. And we'll put in the data files disk and then type the file name. And return. Okay, I'm going to turn on the super CPU. Okay, and here we have my rendition of a Utah teapot. I'm going to turn off the super CPU and go to form mode. Where we can translate it. Let's see. Turn on the super CPU and rotate it and then run the z-axis. Turn it off again. and super CPU on, rotating around the y-axis, okay, and escape form mode, I'm going to turn super CPU off, go to Modi, and set the rendering options, A, keeping those defaults, and H for hidden line and shading mode on, fire button to escape that mode, and we'll go to display, I'll turn on the super CPU, and we have to insert the system disk. Fire to continue. And at this message here, we'll just hit N for no, or 9. So I got a bit of a forced perspective mode there from underneath. And N again. And fire to continue. Okay, let's load another model from the data disk. 
So we'll do this. Turn off the super CPU. A to load a model or an object. A to load the object name. And I'm putting the data file disk back in. Okay. Concord. Not found that found. Oops. Sorry, let's look at the directory. Oh, actually, I just need to go in here. That's on the system disk. So A, A again. Turn on the super CPU. Okay, and there is the Concord. This is one of the models uh, that came on the original disk for the program. And we can translate it here. Let's see. Let's uh, turn the super CPU off for a moment back on and if we can rotate it super CPU off escape now let's try zooming in on our Concord here. So we go to zoom and here we have some options. A is to do a manual zoom on a point of your choosing. Uh, B is to zoom to fit the screen and C uh, unzooms back to the original size and D centers on the object. Okay, so let's choose A. Let's go to some point here to zoom on. And we'll turn the super CPU on. Hit fire. And open. Try this again. Okay. I have to redo this. Zoom. A. Okay, without the super CPU. Okay. And we'll zoom in on the cockpit here. Turn on the super CPU. Okay. And we can go render this. Go to Modi. We'll choose A again. Keep the defaults and H for hidden line and shading mode. Fire. Okay, we'll turn on the super CPU and hit display with fire. System disk is inserted already. Okay, hit in, hit this message, and it's starting the render process.
and again. System disk is already in. Okay, and there we go. That's the rendering of the zoomed in nose cone. So we'll hit left arrow to go back. Okay. Um, and let's try loading another model. Turn off the super CPU. Let's look at the disk directory. Okay, we have space shuttle. So let's try loading that one. Okay. Escape. A. A again. Space shuttle, enter, return. And have the super CPU. There we go. Okay. Let's rotate it around. Turn on the super CPU again. A lot of calculations involved here for it to do this. Axis here. Turning off the super CPU. We'll hit left arrow to escape. Looks like it's in orthographic mode here. So we'll go ahead and try to render this one. Okay, vanishing point on, and keep defaults, H for hidden line and shading, on, okay, and fire button, and then turning on super CPU, display, okay, fire, because the system disk is already in, No at this message. Okay, I think we're looking at the underside of it. No, again. 
fire to continue. Okay, and uh, I'd like to show um, some of the materials that came with it. This book was written uh, for GigaCAD Plus. It's called 3D Construction Mit GigaCAD Plus Off Dem C64 128. That's 3D Construction with GigaCAD Plus for the C64 and 128 by Stephen Vilsmeyer, written in 1986. And it's very nicely done. There's this picture on the back. Uh, it's quite comprehensive, written in German, of course. Uh, it shows what you can make with GigaCAD Plus. And these models are uh, pretty nice. High polygon count for the Commodore 64. Uh, very well done. It goes through all the steps that you need, of course. And it also comes with the system disks that you need for the program. We also have here um, Robert Bernardo's translation of uh, the 64 article, which 64 is a magazine in Germany written in the 80s, um, that was about the original GigaCAD program and he's translated it to the best he could do into English. Including pictures this was very helpful in uh, learning the program for me. Well, um, the program runs nice most of the time, but it does have bugs occasionally, especially if uh, what you're trying to work with uh, has too much data. Um, usually it will tell you if there's not enough memory, but sometimes it will crash, uh, but most of the time it, it runs fine depending on the equipment that you've got as long as that's in good shape. Um, it does remind me in some ways of modern 3D programs such as Blender uh, in the way it uh, uses the four view modes for X, Y, and Z axis. Um, and has most of the basic uh, functions for translating and scaling and, and creating faces. Uh, overall, I think it's pretty nice, especially considering when it was written in 1986. Uh, it, it compares very well with other 3D graphics programs I've seen for uh, these computers. Anyway, I think it's pretty fun to play with, and um, I'd like to see uh, if other people enjoy it as much as I do. Um, thanks very much for your attention at all the various Commodore Expos, and have a good day. Hope you have fun.